So I'm a huge fan of the sciences, uh, of uh, math in general. I'm not much of a mathematician. I'm more of a mathematical philosopher. How's that? Love the ideas behind quantum mechanics. Study a lot of stuff. It's Friday, everybody. Just maybe I should have started that out the right way. My mind is just so fascinated by certain things I've been reading. But it's Friday. What are we going to do today? Today's the day that you want to at least attempt to work two times as hard as any as everybody else, as anybody that you're working with. Because if you do, you're going to get about the same amount of work done today as you did yesterday because everyone else is working half as hard. But if you're the one that makes Friday just as important as the rest of the week, for those of you that have heard me say this, if I give you a $100 bill, then I ask back for 20 bucks. Out of $100, $20 is a lot. 80 bucks is nice. $100 is better, but you recognize that 20 being gone. That's your week. If you work five days a week, why would you settle for 80%? Okay, To get 100% out of Friday, you got to work twice as hard because everyone's working half as hard. you got to get up early because everyone's leaving work early. <laughs> okay, So important to make sure that you maintain that value. Vigilance, okay, it's a must, as Tony Robbins says, it's a must for you to work harder on Fridays, to keep that mentality strong so you can just blast it out to the end of the week, okay, look at the funnel the other direction, I always tell people, a lot of people talk about Wednesday, this hump day, you go up and you go down, right, focus into the middle of the week and then focus out of the week, no, what you want to do is always compete with what you did yesterday, but Friday, Friday is the day the beast comes out. We can jump up on the rock and howl. Okay, Friday's the day you really work at making something substantial. That's the widest end of that funnel. Okay, so again, once in a while I'll give my Friday speech on Fridays. And today we are going to be covering subject matter. You're here for the morning mindset. We do this Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And it's a way for me to get my business, my business day going. You know, I do a few things before we get going normally. I organize my calendar, answer my email. But I tell you, get on this morning mindset and I get ready. I get focused. I get ready to make this day count. So that's what we're here doing together today. We're going to cover a little bit of subject matter. And hopefully that perspective that we give you will help you learn and grow and take the day that we're in and make it count because that's what matters specifically isn't what your overall plan is it's the strategic initiative that you're going to execute today all right doesn't matter how good your ideas are execution is everything you have to execute the things that you're doing or your ideas are simply ideas okay so I uh, um, big fan of meditation big fan of research honestly into a lot of the spiritual realms in a, in a lot of my free time and and I just wanted to give a shout out to Isaac Newton because that man is incredible invented calculus invented some of the standards of physics including the discovery of measure and his measurement of gravity a lot of people don't know that he wrote over one million lines uh, I'm sorry words in alchemy which is a spiritual uh, science and even a the roots of chemistry which has to do with turning base metals into gold, but he uh, was extremely well written in alchemy, and I find that fascinating. And that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit today: is feeding your fascinations without letting them seem like tremendous mountains to climb, because it's so important that you follow the passions of your heart thoroughly and completely and get the academic skills you need so morning mindset Monday through Friday and of course this is for all of you entrepreneurs out there that are trying to get your mindset and get focused on doing something powerful today let's get into our subject so everything is hard before it's easy now I've talked about this before and this is one of my favorite subjects and I'll tell you this is, this is a real thing, okay? It's so incredibly real. I remember the first time 
I used a Windows computer. Now, I was writing in DOS and doing things. I, I, those of you that know my background, I got a big background in software engineering. Uh, but I, I was just barely learning Windows. And someone had to show me how to shrink down and re-execute Word at the taskbar. And I remember looking at that going, wow, this is going to be kind of hard to learn. And I always go back to that in my mind because now we've built incredibly sophisticated software platforms for some of the most successful companies out there. And it's just funny thinking back that that felt daunting to me. That felt disturbingly hard, like I wasn't going to be able to get through understanding how a computer worked. Again, this is obviously years ago at this point. But everything is hard before it's easy. Okay, Johan uh, Wolfgang, go ahead. I'm not too sure how to say his name exactly, but that's a quote by him, all right? Everything is hard before it's easy. And that just sounds so ridiculous, right? And it seems so obvious in some ways, right? Everyone knows somebody who's very good at something, okay? Whether that's you yourself knowing that you're very good at something like basketball playing or you may be extremely well-read in the sciences of some sort, whatever it might be, your experience, your understanding of the things that you know and understand is to other people a lot of times a daunting perspective. It's incredibly beyond what they would consider their scope, but for you or that individual, it all seems so simple and so developed. And here's, here's the reality of it. If you can understand how the learning process works, this will change the way you see almost everything that you're doing. You'll start to get excited about learning because you have to learn as much as you can about everything that you're trying to accomplish. You really do have to be academic about the things that you're doing. Okay, It's important that you don't get so caught up in academia that you think that being academic is a process of execution. Okay, I know some of the most successful people in different venues that are successful because they knew how to take action and execute, not because they knew more than everybody else. Okay, But this process is critical. Tasks that you have ahead of you, especially in applied learning, okay, which is obviously Re learning and then applying what you've learned, right? Very simple. Seems so dauntingly large. When you look at things in retrospect, your cognitive ability to comprehend is not only capable, it's thirsty for more. And this is one of the most interesting sides of this dimension. Whenever you get into a brand new subject, like for example, I'm a, I'm a big fan of psychology, been reading a lot of Carl Jung lately, brilliant individual. And in reading his stuff, I'll tell you, sometimes, and this is like one of the first times it ever happened to me, I'll be reading for like 45 minutes in three to four pages because he packs and condenses so much critical information into that, into that, that structure that you can't get past it. And it was so funny, a friend of mine came by the other day, and uh, we were talking about Carl Jung, and he would mentioned that. And I laughed because I was experiencing so much of that, like getting through the collective unconscious basically is the book I'm reading right now of his, it's about maybe three and a half, 400 pages. And it has been a long period of time for me. And I get through books pretty quick. I usually read a couple a month and there's so much information. But what's really neat is, and I underline everything when I read. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, addicted to academia, and I, I, I go back through and read a lot of the things that I underline, and I zip through them, and my mind comprehends them so well that it isn't this process as it was when I first read it. When I'm going back from a, an, a reference point of view, I zip right through it. Same thing happened with Eric Worre's book. Okay, I'm saying that in particular because I have a network marketers on here. It wasn't super daunting. It's a fairly well-written, simple book. But I remember going back through there to get certain reference that I could use in my business. And it was super easy to just find right where in the book it was and, and to associate different things that he had said so I could find it faster. You know, like when you flip back through a book, you start reading, the context comes back to you, and you're like, oh, yeah, it was about 20 pages past this. 
or I think it's the next page, or the chapter before that. Once you actually go through the process of, co uh, of cognition and you achieve that potential framework in your mind, you remember the things that you're learning. The experience that you start to have with what you had learned becomes very practical, simple, straightforward. And we need to just remember that those are the facts. That's one of the biggest things for us and what makes it difficult is that we re need to remember that those are the facts. That once we understand it, okay, applied learning is a process of learning and then applying, which means you must understand to apply. Once we understand it, something changes in our perception of the things that we know. Like, for example, there are several books that I've read recently that I could flip back through, and they're very referenced, very organized in my mind, and do not seem like daunting subjects at all. And the stuff I choose to read a lot of times are, is very daunting in general. Just to me, I, I don't know what it would be to everybody else. But it's that back view reference from once you get through it, so let me help you a little bit on the process of learning and reading, okay? Reading specifically because that's one of the best ways to learn. When you're reading, keep your mind clear. Don't talk to yourself in your own head about how difficult the subject seems or don't get frustrated that you may or may not understand what you're reading. Act like you're in a movie. Act like you went with your buddies to the IMAX theater and you got your 3D glasses on and you're sitting there expectant with a big smile on your face, ready to get the information in and have a great time experiencing what you're reading or watching per se, right? And when I say watching, that's an important thing to know. There is theory that's fairly sound. Um, uh, Borm, I'm going to say his name wrong, is a physicist, actually won a, won a lot of awards for the fact that our minds actually store information holographically. Now, when I first heard that, I was like, you know what, that just sounds like somebody somewhere decided that a little bit of what they knew about physics was important enough that they were going to make something up, okay? Unfortunately, that happens a lot. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of science for what science is, right? But this gentleman, which I've come to learn more recently, had discovered that one of the potentialities, all right, and if you know much about physics, you know that potentialities really a lot of times are almost hard-driven proven facts, that theory really isn't theory per se, it's that the method of science is a theoretical process, all right? So they're quote-unquote theories in most ways when they become widely accepted are actually to a degree facts. So they are facts. So this philosophy is that within our, our brains, within our neurological center, that we literally store information holographically, which requires imagery. So think about photo memory, right? And as you already know, your mind works in a very fantastic, incredible format of imagery and images. And again, if you want to really get into that stuff, Carl Jung would be an incredible individual to read. But the reality is from, from that physics position, most likely our mind remembers things holographically and they've even proven to some degree in computers which I think is really incredible that holographic memory is actually a possibility within computer systems and may even be a better way of storing memory. So in general my point is that you want to read when you're reading and pretend like you're in a movie. Bring in the dimension, the color, the experience, the emotion the fascination. Let the words become life in your mind. Reading and seeing what you're reading and being part of that entire experience as you read 
will take you into a, an incredible world. You've seen things, of course, where they they talk about children reading and they, 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 they have these commercials where they're all happy and they see these cartoons flying all around them and they're, oh, reading's amazing. At the end of them, they're, they're, there's some big thing about reading and how important it is, right? Well, the reality is it, it doesn't change for us adults. And what you need to know is that even if it seems like a difficult subject, Everything is hard until it's easy. Cognition requires effort. Okay, Your mind has to go through a process to absorb information and display it properly within that holographic potential memory stream you have in your mind so that you can capture and keep it. So large things become small things much faster than you think. If you know this about the learning process, you can go into the learning process with more confidence, and it is important that you do this. Okay, One of the things I love about Tony Robbins is that he talks about successful people as those that are certain when they are surrounded by uncertainty. Even if they are in a situation where, as he even states, a pessimist may be more accurate about the outcomes that they're going to experience. An optimist who to a degree really knows what the challenges are, but believes beyond them is the one who actually gets things more accomplished, even though the pessimist was more accurate. Okay, So when you're going through this process and you're studying a subject or learning about something, remember that it will always feel and be experienced as confusing, difficult, beyond you, more than you can handle, more than you're capable of when you're getting into the subject and learning how to process the information concerning the subject. Okay, Because when you get into retrospect, okay, again, I'll read this. When you look at things in retrospect, your cognitive ability to comprehend is not only capable, it's thirsty for more. Once you get that in there, once you understand the information, this thirst will come to you because your mind naturally wants to understand its environment and you're consciously feeding that mind something that you feel is going to make major improvements in your understanding, your life, your relationships, your future. It becomes thirsty. It's like, wow, I get this. I understand this. And you start wanting to learn more. You'll start ignoring the part of the process that says this is difficult to understand, this isn't assimilated, there's no categorical relations in this. All right, there's no compendium of correspondences to this. Okay, once your mind starts to build correspondences within a subject, in other words, relative information from something you read that's relative to something else that you read, suddenly you start seeing the movie all by itself. And you start figuring things out in your mind all by itself. And then it gets exciting. And then you get a thirst because you're making these interconnections. But you've got to start from the position that even though it seems beyond you, that it's not. And if you can do that, if you can start from that position and really focus in your mind, okay, that this assimilation may seem hard, but will become easy. You will understand it. You will get it. It's not that you can't or that you won't. It's that you've got to go through that process and see it vividly, dimensionally, feel it, smell it, get your senses involved in what you're reading. Don't let the information that you're reading be confused or distorted by the other voices in your head that are saying this is difficult. This subject's intense. Keep those things out. Act like you're at a movie and see it as dimensionally as you can because the learning process, the cognitive process requires that there are things that you don't know. Requires that there is understanding that you still need to gain. Requires it to seem dauntingly large. Because cognition requires that uncertainty or literally that, that, that point of, of no reference in order to create intelligence. Okay? It's a natural part of the learning process for it to feel overwhelming and, imp and impossible to understand. It's one of the steps that allows your cognition to go to the next level. Okay? So large things become small things much faster than you think.
That's the most important thing here in this conversation. Just put yourself in the process. Learn the things that you need to learn. No matter how large they feel, do not convince yourself that you're incapable. Human beings are 10 times more capable than the capacity that they have. Talking about Isaac Newton at the beginning of this, I was blown away. Okay, this guy's, well, I think it's like 1500s is what, what, where he's from. Actually, I've got it up over here. Let me tell you exactly what, what time frame this is from. Isaac Newton, one second here. Okay, yes. So he was, uh, do you believe, born 1642. How's that? Yep, till 1726. So imagine the time frame. We didn't even have cars, steam engines, right? And this gentleman invents calculus, the basic foundations for physics, right? Some of the, 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 the more important parts of the telescope that we use today was invented by Isaac Newton. He was considered one of the grandfathers of mathematics, and he wrote over one million words in the ancient spiritual science of alchemy okay and I was talking with my with my brother I'm like you know it, it, somewhere else I read I think it was 16,000 documents I, I'd have to look that up it was 6,000 16,000 that he actually wrote in alchemy and I was talking to my no I brought my son and I was just like where's your 6,000 parchments <laughs> you know I mean what an incredible individual and it's because he allowed that fascination that incredible certainty that he has as a human being be his lifeline, be who he is, be his world. So I suggest you do the same. I'd like to give you one more word of advice. Get things moving today. It's Friday. Make stuff happen today. Do something powerful today. Close a big sale today. I'll be right back here again on Monday morning. Thank you for spending your time here with me. This is Beto Paredes with The Morning Mindset, and talk to you soon.